Hello everybody and welcome back to more Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore Yes, once again back in this game because in the last episode where we last left off We actually finished our second route for the second dude in this game which is Rods So we got his true ending I'm trying to remember like there's only good and true ending so I believe we got his true ending So we saw um in that we i don't know like we we kind of just had a really nice sweet moment together like after a hard day's work of just like him going to his lessons and just like us you know being very domestic i would say but yeah we went back and we just made we like made a, little, a sweet little cute promise to each other that you know we'd always um have each other's backs and then you know we we he got on his knees and he kind of sort of proposed again sort of and then it was like sore to us that you know he'd be a good king basically so yeah so we saw that um i would now we're back and i think after rods is route because we've already done we've done oh my god waltz sorry that was his name waltz was our first guy and then it was rod and then this time how i kind of decided on who to go next was based on the a little achievement page that we seen on the front on the in the gallery so there's like there's names and orders rod was technically the very first one and i think waltz might have been like the last one i think so i'm just gonna go ahead and do the next person who's supposedly after rod and um I'll tell you now, it's gonna be Claude. So we're gonna do Claude this time. Mr. Mr. Dramatic over here. There he is. No, that's Fritz. Where's Claude? There's Claude. We're gonna do Claude. So Claude's the story from Cinderella, a Cinderella phenomenon, the first game, was that he was, it was based on like more like Beauty and the Beast in a way, where he was cross dressing as Karma, which is like his, um, his what's like his alter ego in a way not kind of kind of like fritz but except claude i forgot what was claude's it was claude just just did he actually turn into like a, a a beast or a monster like legit actually because i know fritz fritz's story is just basically he has a double ego where he has an evil self he has like an evil twin that kind of lives inside his mind and that was his issue I don't know, I forgot what his story was based on it, but I swear Claw actually had like he he transformed into like a, a a monster or a beast or something. That was his fairy tale curse. So I, I swear that was him. But anyways, we're gonna just dive into it. Maybe the maybe as we go along with his story in this game, we can kind of like get some flashbacks and get some little reminders of what it was. But anyways, yeah, that's it. That's him. So let's dive right in. Cloud. Chapter one. The Chameleon Prince. Yes, he is. He certainly is. He's very good at doing that. Ho ho ho. Like ho ho ho. Yes. Santa. Oh, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> oh my god. Allergies. Okay, sorry. If I were you, I would give up now, Princess Hana. What are we doing? You ought to just surrender, darling. Oh, yeah. What kind of villain says darling? <laughs> What's happening? Hana, this is where you play along. Are we gonna play? What's going on? I'll take a deep breath, then force myself to glare at him. I would never succumb to you. Oh. We're just sparring, I guess. I parry Claude's sword moments after he lands a blow on the edge of my blade. His momentary surprise fades into concentration as he rushes me again, sword raised high. Oh. The tension. This time I'm unable to parry, and when our swords connect, it is all I can do to keep my stance. Claude's face is inches from mine. A cocky smile lights his face, but his calm is unwavering. Use any means necessary to best me, I dare you. <laughs> God, he's such a flirt. Anyways, that's him. That's Claude. At this proximity, I can see the flecks of color in Claude's eyes, the flicker of golden light on his on gentle green. His eyes will always remind me of this forest. I steal my eyes away from I steal I steal my eyes away from him and glimpse the rest of his body to search for an opening. How should I attack him? Use magic, use a sword. Magic. I'm a magic his ass. 
I do have one way. I do have one easy way of gaining an upper hand. Maybe I will not win, but I smile at him. You've forgotten one very important thing, Claude. Oh, I am a witch, and you are not. You wouldn't. You said any means, so I'm gonna do it. Claude's sword slides past mine with enough force to make my blade loose in my hand, but my grip no longer matters. My taunt has temporar temporarily caught Claude off guard, giving me enough time to concentrate on my magic. Ice begins to gather on my fingertips. Claude rushes me again with his sword just as I hold up my hand to cast my spell. I aim the ice at his feet. I'm gonna trip you. <laughs> I'm gonna trip you. Did it work? When the, wit when the whiteness clears, my ice has accumulated at the ground, turning the vibrant green blades of grass into fragments of powdered white. But Claude is nowhere to be seen. Uh, what? I feel the cold tap of a blade against my shoulder. Oh, damn. What the heck? Before I can turn in place, I feel an arm around my waist and lips close to my neck. I can feel Claude's breath on my skin when he laughs. What the heck? Cheaters never prosper, darling. You told me to best you in whatever way that I could, right? <laughs> Claude responds by moving his lips down to the nape of my neck and planting a soft kiss there. I stumble away, my fingers tight on the grip of the sword. Claude raises an eyebrow at me and grins. Perhaps if you hadn't warned me about your magic in advance, you might have won. Though even had you won, it wouldn't have been a very fair victory. I hold out my sword once again, but too late. Uh, Claude has already closed in on me again, his blade at my neck. He knows me too well. The moment I become flustered, I lose all my concentration. He grins at me, triumphant. Really though, you should have admitted defeat much earlier. I'm stubborn, you know I am. He moves the edge of the blade uh, away from my neck and leans forward to brush his lips against my ear. The rest of his words come in a whisper. There's no besting me, love. I can predi predict your every movement. Okay, whatever. Whatever. I sigh. I know when I am beaten, and to fight any more would be futile. I pull my arm away from Claude with a groan. I almost had you. Almost, but not quite. I groan at Claude's response. He always manages to say such things nonchalantly, without even batting an eyelash. I have just readied my retort when, some when something breaks the silence of the forest around us. I hope we're not interrupting anything. Oh. I whirl in place to stare in the direction of the new voice. I am surprised to see Garland and Jurian standing a short distance away beneath a copse of trees. How long have you two been standing there? <laughs> long enough to see the thrilling end to that match. You almost had him that time, princess. Thanks, I, I'm glad someone believes in me. Garland looks at Claude and shakes his head. A victory this close to the princess's birthday would have been a good gift. I would refuse such a victory. What is the point if I do not earn it myself? Right. Claude grins. Spoken with all the pride of a knight. You see, Garland? She would never accept such a thing. I know Hannah like the back of my hand. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I would hope you know your fiancé like the back of your hand. I cannot help that... Let me that my cheeks warm at Jurian's words. Even though I have been Claude's fiance for the last few months, most people do not bring up our engagement so casually. Look at him so smug and proud of himself. God. Claude sidles closer to me and wraps an arm around my waist. You really are so adorable when you're embarrassed. If you even begin to tease me, my sword will fill, would find your hand. Your threats are as sweet as your compliments. He smiles at me mischievously before stepping away and glancing at Jurian and Garland. I hope the two of you didn't come for a personal lesson. You know that I have an important matter to attend to, no? I stifle a sigh. I know just as well as Jurian and Garland that Claude has something he needs to pick up in town today. Most likely it is another gift for me. Claude plans to give me a birthday gift every day of the week leading up to my birthday. Damn, <laughs> he did the same thing last year and the year before that. But this year, his first day birthday gift was rather extravagant. Oh my goodness. He's like sugar daddying me. I cannot believe that the bouquet of lilies he brought me yesterday had to be delivered on a cart. I wonder what kind of gift he plans on bringing by today? Something maybe I can eat? 
Six days remain until my birthday, which means that the gifts will become more extravagant from here on out. Oh my goodness. It is usually the gifts he gives me on my birthday date that is the most heartfelt and special, but I cannot help but look forward to his smaller surprises regardless. His efforts are always showy, and that is what makes them feel like Claude. It's very Claude-like, yes. Besides, he always puts so much thought into the gifts, extravagant or not. I turn back to the conversation at hand. The two knights are still discussing some sort of training regimen. The exchange goes on for another few minutes before Claude turns to me and smiles. By your leave, darling, I shall rush off to town and pick up your gift. I promise that you will absolutely love this one. Oh, okay. At least his gifts have meaning to them. Like, he's not just giving us all these showy gifts for, like, no reason. Hopefully it doesn't need to be delivered on a cart. Or involve some foreign choir. <laughs> oh my god. Or a cake so large it takes four people to carry it up the stairs. Oh, please. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's too much cake. You two are just jealous you didn't get to deliver those items yourself last year. The cake- that cake was made by the best baker in the whole kingdom and that choir. Yes, yes, they probably won or not. They, they, did they win the Grammys? Did they win the Grammys? Okay. <laughs> I cannot help the laughter that escapes my lips. Claude abruptly stops talking to plant a kiss on my head. He gazes at me with a fond smile before shaking his head. Enough dawdling. I have to go now if I want to make it in time for our designated meeting. I promise I won't be late, Hana. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. He grasps my hand briefly before rushing off. I notice that in his hurry, he has forgotten to sheath his sword. Claude, your sword! Your sword! He lets out a soundless sigh as he sheaths the sword and rushes off, uh, leaving me alone with the two knights. Looks like someone's got their head in the clouds. Doesn't he always when he's around the princess? The two glance at each other, some silent amusement flickering between them. Did you come out here just to spy on us? Of course not, your highness. Okay. <laughs> we were on our way out of the palace when Princess Emmeline stopped us and asked us to deliver a message. Okay, a message. The princess requires your assistance. On what? Yeah, with what? She didn't provide any details, unfortunately. Okay. If she didn't explain what it was for, then it is highly likely that this is about that surprise celebration she wants to show- she wants to throw me. But is it still a surprise if I know that it is happening? Garland and Jurian glance at each other for a few moments, some hidden message conveyed in their gazes. Garland claps a hand on Jurian's shoulder with a smile. I'll escort the princess back. I'll meet up with you before the hour's up. Uh, Jurian puts her hand over his, but only briefly before she nods at him. Don't be too late, otherwise I'll start eating without you. You two are so cute. <laughs> Garland slides his hand off of her shoulder as she turns to walk away from us. Once she is out of sight, the two of us begin our walk back towards the palace. Okay, now we're back. Garland stops when we arrive at the gates. He turns to me with a bright smile. Here we are, princess. Oh, why? He looks at me quizzically. I just noticed you didn't have a knight escort with you today. A few weeks ago, I was able to convince father that we no longer needed an escort in the forest. I feel it is better that way. It feels more special when it is just Claude and I there. Besides, I am the Tenebrarian Bearer and Claude is a talented swordsman. We have nothing to fear when we are together, right? No, the king should be able to fill you in on that situation. Garland looks at me thoughtful, then he nods. Princess Emmeline should be in the dining hall. Is there anything else that you require? Nah. Nothing that I can think of. You're free to go back to your date. <laughs> I know. I See, I noticed. Don't think I didn't. Garland flushes a crimson red that makes me laugh. Despite how discreet he and Jurian try to be, it is very easy to see that the two of them are courting each other. It has been that way for the last two years. I narrow my eyes at him. How goes the matter, Claude and I discussed with you? Have you spoken to Jurian yet? Have you proposed? No, not yet. <laughs> Garland shakes his head, eyebrows furrowed. The timing doesn't feel right. I'll propose to her after your birthday party or your wedding. But right now, we need to focus on security for both of those celebrations. You two are hardworking to a fault, you know. Uh, it's an occupational hazard, I'm afraid. I shake my head with a sigh. That dedication is what makes Jurian and Garland two of the most competent knights we have in Angio. After I excuse him, he bows and then turns to walk away. 
I am about to walk in through the front gates when he suddenly calls my name. Yes? Oh, Princess Hana, did Prince Claus say anything about when his brother was scheduled to arrive? Oh, right. Uh, I had nearly forgotten that Claude's brother, Lance, is supposed to arrive the week before our wedding. Claude insisted that he had- Claude insisted that he come as late as possible. Why? He should be here at the beginning of the next month. Garland looks at me for a few moments, a troubled expression on his face. Is something wrong, Garland? Do you know something I don't? It's nothing. Uh-huh. Okay. Garland smiles before turning and walking away. I watch his back, contemplating calling him back. Instead, I find my thoughts turning to the last time I mentioned Lance. Why? You've been sulking all day. Is something wrong? Uh, I sit beside Claude on the bed, my hand resting on his knee. He stares out my window, his gaze glassy. You would laugh. No, I won't. I would laugh at you anyways. <laughs> Claude's lips quirk slightly before he angles his head toward me with a sigh. If you must know, it's my brother. Okay, what about him? Lance? Yes, la yes, Llama. I raise an eyebrow sharply. What about him? Did he write something strange in his letter? In his last letter? Not so much strange as annoying. He proposed visiting Angia one week before our wedding for a preliminary celebration. I failed to see the problem. The problem is that it's Lama. He attracts unwanted attention wherever he goes. You've met him before, you understand what I mean. The last time I spoke with Lance was nearly a year ago. He and his mother came to visit Claude in Angiel and brought everyone in the palace a terrifying amount of gifts. He was a lot like you, <laughs> right? Yeah. I am offended, darling. We are nothing alike. Um, <laughs> I am radiant like the sun and Lama is... Uh, a magnet. He has a way of stealing the spotlight. In he has a way of stealing the spotlight always. Is that why you're sulky? You're worried he'll steal the spotlight from you? <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Babu. <laughs> Babu. Claude looks at me disgruntled. I'm right, aren't I? Not at all. I'm worried he'll steal the spotlight from you. I don't care about that, girl. <laughs> I slide closer to him. Claude, I will be fine. I do not crave attention like you do. <laughs> crave attention? Me? Yes, you. Do not deny it. But you... I put a finger to his lips. You already give me enough attention as it is. And that's all I really need, right? The only attention that matters is from you. I don't care about anyone else. Claude pulls my hand away from his mouth and gently kisses my palm. He smiles a little sheepishly. If you insist, then I'll write back to my brother and tell him he can come early. I just hope you won't regret this decision. It'll be fine. What can possibly go wrong? Uh, Lance has been very popular in Angel ever since he visited with his mother, but... No matter his magnetism, he certainly won't- He certainly won't detract the townspeople from a royal wedding. Distract people from a royal wedding. I am sure that Claude must have something planned for the week before the wedding, and he just does not want Lance taking anyone's attention away from it. It will be fine. It's fine. I shake my head. I shake my head to clear my thoughts before turning to head back into the palace. Claude is so cute. He's just saying <laughs> worries about such silly things. The hallways are bustling with activity when I enter. Many of the gathered servants and maids stop chattering as I approach. Addies, aren't you all supposed to be on break? Ah, uh, princess, we were just enjoying our break outside. Okay. Nice weather, yes. Go ahead. I glance around at the gathered staff. I am certain that these people do not usually take their breaks together, even if they do happen to share the same off times. I see. <laughs> Have any of you seen Emmeline? The princess is in the di the princess is in the dining hall with the royal chefs, princess. Too many princesses, Jesus. I thank the maids with a little bob of my head before making my way to the dining hall. Emmeline, my dear sister, where are you? The dining hall is just as lively as the hallway, if not even more. Appetizing scents wafts through the air, mingling to create an overly piquant aroma. I spot Emmeline amidst the crowds, testing colored liquids in different chalices. She raises a chalice to her lips just as I arrive before hurriedly placing it back on the table. What's your sipping on? Oh, Hannah, 
You look guilty of something. You Were you taste testing wines without me? No, not at all. Not at all, yes. I glance around at the different chalices. Emmeline's shoulders droop with defeat. I was just trying- I was trying different cocktails concoctions for your birthday dinner. It was Claus's idea that we mix something completely original for you. Oh, I was debating what type of cocktail to make for you. Strawberries and bananas? Something with cucumbers and lime? <laughs> I feel terrible because I don't know what your fla- what your favorite flavors are. That can't be helped. I don't think I've ever spoken about my preferences with you. Still, I must make certain that this drink is perfect. She gestures to the various chalices, then points to one at the far end. It is filled with a white-blue juice and has a familiar creature sitting on top of the glass as a decoration. Huh? Oh, she did a little jelly chameleon. <laughs> what? Well, if this is well, if this was Claus's idea, then I am not surprised he used a chameleon to decorate the chalices. I think it's cute. What are you talking about? Years ago, when I first met him, Claude enlightened me with stories of his childhood. Apparently, he has a special attachment to chameleons. Uh, sometimes, when the two of us are practicing together, he even refers to himself as the Chameleon Prince. He says that he did it so he did it to to so that we could have matching titles. But Chameleon Prince and Ice Princess do not match at all. <laughs> I stare at the Chameleon Topper. And is this birthday celebration really for me, or is it for him? I've actually been trying to come up with a name for it, but haven't thought of anything yet. So I thought it might be nice for you to choose it. It will be distributed to the marketplace after we unveil it at your birthday after all. What? Where everybody gets a drink? I, I mean, that's, that's nice. Claude insisted that the populace have some way to celebrate with you. Since we're going to distribute it in your name, I thought I'd ask you what you wanted me to call the drink. A name for the drink. The Lily the Chameleon. I mean, <laughs> it has a goddamn chameleon on it. I don't know if it's proper to call it the Lily because... But I mean, at the same time, it's like... Yeah, it's like, it's... It, if I choose a chameleon, then it means like it's... It's more so it's like this, this is what Claude wants to do, not... For himself. Claude wants to do it for himself rather than it's for me. It's just a but he says it's for me as a way to like, you know, like cover up for it. But no. I mean Hey man, if it's my if it's supposed to be my drink, then I'll I'll name it whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> oh right, lilies are your favorite flower. Yeah, why excuse me, Claude. Claude, why didn't you why didn't you put a, a lily topper instead of a chameleon one? Like or we can have both on it. I don't know. Maybe we should put a lily on top of the chameleon's head, or remove the chameleon? Hmm, I think we should just take it off. Was it Claus's idea to have the chameleon there? Emily laughs. It was. He said it was symbolic, that since the drink represents you, he had to have something symbolic for him on the glass too, since the two of you are inseparable. That sounds like something he would do. And oh, what sort of mixture do you want for the drink? Okay, he can have the chameleon topper, I can have the name. <laughs> How's that? Like, that seems fair enough. I am not picky. Feel free to choose what you will. Really? Are you sure? Emmeline looks at me uncertainly. Uh, are you still here trying to drink some? Is that Rod? The familiar voice uh, makes us both whirl in place. Yes, is Rod. Rod stands behind us, lips quirked into a small smile. I step back without realizing. I am still unused to Roz's change tight, especially with his quiet demeanor. It feels almost... like a contradiction. <laughs> you're too tall, and you're, you're not quiet. He scowls at me. Is there something on my face? No. You cast a shadow. <laughs> you never used to do that before. <laughs> you're terrible. <laughs> Emmeline just giggles, then she clasps a hand on my shoulder. Anyway, thanks for the help, Hannah. I actually had a few more questions to ask you, but I need to figure out this drink before the end of the hour. Rod, you should help me. Uh, you want me to help you taste drinks? Yes, it's an easy job. We can both be royal test drinkers. Uh, I don't think nobles test drinks for the- I don't think nobles test drinks for other nobles. The two of them continue their back and forth banter, and for a few moments, I watch with amusement. 
I have tried my best to mend my relationship with Emmeline and Rod over the years, and even though the bonds we share are not as strong as the bond they have with each other, our relationship is no longer strained. That's good. I think I'll leave you two to your taste testing. I have to meet Claude soon. He insisted on meeting me in my room before he has to run off to a lesson with his uh, history tutor. He's picked up NGL history fairly quickly, especially since he just started recently. And since I convinced him to stop hiding from the tutor, Emmeline is staring at the chalice with the chameleon topper thoughtfully. I wonder what sort of gift he'll bring today. Uh, hopefully it's not a choir or some gigantic cake with enchanted candles. There's no way you, there's no way to know with Claude. The surprise is part of the gift. Well, do let us know what it is once you get through the wrapping paper. If it's small enough to fit in wrapping paper, that is. <laughs> I nod my head with a smile. The three of us trade quick farewells before I walk out of the crowded dining hall and back into the corridor. Okay. Oh, I have barely managed a few steps into the corridor before someone collides with me. The impact pushes me down to the ground. Damn. I I'm so sorry. Ugh. The man holds out his hand to me. Is it Lance? My humblest and most sincerest apologies, Princess Hana. Please allow me to help you to your feet. I glance up at the man and frown. I am about to respond to his apology when I pause, noticing his gentle features. It is impossible not to recognize him. This is... It's, La it's Lance, I knew it's him. Lance, you're here early. I stare at him in shock. The light of the sun is angled just right on his features, making everything on his face gl gently glow. My earlier agitation disappears completely when I behold his smile. I still look... I st I'm still scowling, apparently. Nice to see you again too, Princess Hana. <laughs> and once again, I am so sorry. I continue to stare at him, eyes wide, his apology barely re barely registering in my mind. You're not supposed to be here for another month, right? That I am not, yet yeah, here I stand. Uh, he continues to smile at me jovially. Uh, there is an explanation for this, I promise, okay? Refuse his help, take his hand. His, he gestures again with his hand, a clear insistence that I take it. I mean, I'm not gonna be rude. His smile lengthens into something even more dazzling as he grips my hand and pulls me to my feet. I have done a terrible thing, knocking over a beautiful lady. Is there anything I can do to apologize to you? Listen, just relax. You can let go of her hand. Oh, oh, Claude. Claude appears suddenly behind Lance, his expression mired with a scowl. Lance releases my hand immediately. I knocked her down, so I... Yes, I, yes, I know, the usual story. This is what happens when one is clumsy. Lance smiles a little sheepishly before he turns his full attention, to Cla his full attention on Claude. Well, that was a little awkward, but... His smile widens into something somehow... His smile widens into something somehow both shining and gentle. Nice to see you too, Karma. Uh, Lama. <laughs> the, few that are, the few people that are in the hallway, including a few of the servants, pause briefly to glimpse at Lance as they pass. They smile when Lance makes eye contact with them. Last time Lance was here, he had a similar effect. He has a way of sparkling. Claude does it too, but on purpose. I did not think it was possible uh, before, but I am fairly certain Lance sparkles without meaning to. <laughs> He's doing it right now, yeah. Uh, Lance's smile slowly. Lance's smile fades slowly. I apologize for not writing in advance of my arrival. Father insisted I come early to surprise you. By showing up an entire month early? Yes, exactly. Last time I visited with Mother, we ruined everyone's schedules. Father figured that if no one had any time to plan, I wouldn't be imposing as much. <laughs> That's a weird way to kind of think of it. Uh, that is not very sound logic. I've never met Claude and Lance's his father, but sometimes I cannot help but wonder what sort of king he is outside of stories that outside of the stories I hear. No, it's not sound logic, but it is something Father would do. He likes surprising people. Uh, the two men look at each other for a few moments. Lance looks noticeably uncomfortable with Claude scowling at him. Well, you guys have got to get it from somewhere, I suppose. The silence is stifling. I clear my throat. It is good to have you here, Lance. Does my family know that you are here? 
Oh, I already met with King Genaria and Queen Ophelia earlier. I was on my way to visit Princess Emmeline and Prince Rod when I bumped into you in the hallway. Oh, and I happened upon Commander Garland earlier. I was watching one of his practices. Perhaps Garland met Lance earlier, and that is why he mentioned his name. Did he want did he want to keep all of this a surprise? Oh, oh maybe. Lance smiles again. I hear that your birthday is in six days, Princess Hana. It will be an honor to attend the celebration. Yeah. And it will be an honor to have you there, Lance. Even though Claude doesn't look happy. <laughs> Claude still looks agitated by the conversation. Claude is always unreasonably moody when his, when his brother visits. He tells me that it is sibling rivalry, but sometimes I feel it runs deeper than that. I had hoped to catch up with the with you two with you two, but don't I don't want to interrupt any of your plans. Claude sighs beside me. He seems to deflate a little, but some of the earlier tension I sense of in him fades away. He smiles at Lance, the sight puts me at ease. As much as I want to catch up now, I have an engagement, too, in fact. I steal a quick glance at Claude's hands and realize belatedly that he holds a colorful box in them. Is that the birthday gift he mentioned earlier? It is surprisingly small. Yeah, I figured as much. This is uh, what happens when one shows up unexpectedly at another person's doorstep. In that case, I'll make myself scarce for the hour. If you have the time to spare after your engagements, I'll be in the dining hall. I hear some sort of celebration planning is taking place. Yeah, you wanna go try out some drinks? <laughs> go right ahead. He gives a slight but elegant bow before walking past us, still smiling his gentle smile. It begins. <laughs> Claude. What? You're so dramatic. The llama takeover. Aren't you being a bit dramatic? He is your brother. I'm dramatic because he is my brother and I know him. Oh, Claude sighs. I'll have to rearrange the schedule now to make sure he doesn't accidentally change any of my plans. I'm sure he won't. Plans? Claude shakes his head slightly before smiling at me mischievously. Plans? Whatever are you talking about, Hannah? Oh, okay, surprise. Alright, I'll pretend I didn't hear. I nudge his shoulder, but he just laughs at me before setting his arm on my shoulders with a smile. Shall we? Okay. The two of us make our way down the corridor into my room. What you got for me? Like I said, or like Hannah mentioned, is a surprisingly small gift. Thankfully, there are no further incidences in the hallway. By the time we get back to my room, Claude is noticeably more at ease. I take a seat on my bed as he shuts the door behind him. The day's is climax is at, is at last upon us. Okay. There's no choir involved in this, is there? Last year, I sat down on my bed and a choir started singing a birthday song in the garden outside my window. <laughs> no choir, this is much better. Okay. He sits, he sits down beside me and hands me the box. His eyes are glimmering with excitement. Claude's excitement is just as much a part of the gift as the gift itself. He always looks so happy when he gives me something. And his happiness is contagious. Clearly, his love language is gift giving. <laughs> Are you going to continue to make me wait in suspense? Oh, okay, I thought this was my gift and not yours. I feel like this is going to be a reoccurring problem. <laughs> Along with, I guess, his like his deep secret insecurities with Lance. Don't be like that, love. You know how much I enjoy seeing your eyes light up when you open a gift. I glance down at the little box that is now on my lap. It is wrapped in vibrant red, gold, and green. A small card on the top reads, To my betrothed on her special birthday week, you are my compass, even in darkest times. Aww, okay, that's kind of cute. <laughs> that's kind of cute. All right. Okay. I flush a little as I pluck the card off and set it aside. Betrothed, it is still so strange to think that we are engaged. Everything feels as it always has. It feels... natural. I eye the ring on my finger as I carefully unfold the wrapping paper. You could just tear the paper, you know? No, no, she's like me. <laughs> she's like me for real. Like, I just, I have to pick at the, the way you taped it so I can, like, unfold it properly. I enjoy making you wait in suspense. You do like to tease me, don't you? I laugh as I pull off the wrapping paper and then slowly open up the box that Claude has brought for me. Oh, oh, yeah, he is. He was, uh, he was like, the, the, the beast. Oh, that's kind of cute. This... Oh, I take the first plush out of the box and stare at it. It is fuzzy and almost completely black with red eyes, and yet somehow, it is cute. And the other plush... 
I take, out, I take it out and gaze at its dress and face. It has a lily necklace hanging from its neck and glass slippers on its small feet. I can immediately tell from the hair who it is meant to be. It's me and... I stare at the black beast plush, startled. You? Aww. Claude laughs, looking pleased with himself. But why would he make himself out to be a beast? Yeah, why do you view yourself like that, girl? I thought, I got, I thought we, were, oh, we, we got over this. Like, we, we talked this out. You look confused, but certainly you must realize that this gift is based off the beauty and the beast. Yes, I know, because that was your fairy tale curse, but still, it's like, but you... Look, I even get, look, I even gave myself a crown. I furrow my eyebrows at him. Okay. You don't really think that you're... a beast? Claude. Do you want to talk about it? Claude's lips curve into a gentle smile. In the past, yes, but for now, the beast is just a plush. Don't you think it's cute? Yes, I do think it's cute. I glance down at the beast plush again, my fingers on the crown. The past, hmm? I lean against Claude's shoulder and hold up the two plush toys so that I can see them side by side. They are adorable, Claude. I love them. Right? I wrap my arms around his waist and settle my head on his shoulder. Thank you. Better than a choir or a large cake? I debated combining the two this year, you know. <laughs> Stop. Um, I suppose if I had to choose... No, wait, don't tell me. You might just break my heart. <laughs> I grin at him as he wraps an arm around my waist and plants a kiss on the top of my head. I love everything that you get from me, no matter how small or how grand. My eye I eye the rose locket hanging around his neck and smile. Claude notices me looking and puts a hand, on and puts a hand to it. More than two years ago, he had a rose tattoo by his heart. Now, he calls the rose locket his heart. That's so cute. I could get the whole world if I I could get you the whole world if I could. But for now, I hope you don't mind settling for these smaller gifts. No, I don't mind at all. I've never been- I've never been able to fit the whole world in my- I'd never be able to fit the whole world in my room. But I can fit you in here at least. And that's probably the most important thing. <gasps> wow, I'm so smooth with it. I was just gonna say, I was like, don't worry, baby. You already got me the world. And it's you're, it's sitting right beside me. God, Claude. Don't you know? Don't you know? Probably. Hannah, I'm offended. I laugh and he leans down to plant a kiss on my smile. You won't really let me skip out on my lessons today. I could I could think of much better things to do with this time. <laughs> he raises an eyebrow at me, but I just slide away from him. A prince of Angiel needs to know his kingdom, doesn't he? Yes. Claude stares at me after that, his expression growing surprisingly somber. For a few moments, I see a glint of melancholy in his eyes. Then he stands up abruptly and fixes a smile to his face. Oh, are you are you feeling a little insecure about, you know, taking on such a big role? Of course, and then there's also my kid brother to attend to. I will go speak with Lance, so do not worry about him. Claude, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm engaged to you, okay? Not Lance. <laughs> Once again, Claude's expression is sullen, but the look is only temporary. He leans down to take my hand, then places a soft kiss at its back. In that case, I will see you later, my love. Okay, I'll see you later. I'll see you later, Baba. He, smil he smiles at me one last time before heading out the door. I fall back on my bed, holding the two plushes to my chest. I hold up the beast plush and sigh. That uneasiness I felt just now was my imagination, right? Mm, the beast plush does not answer me. I set the beauty and the beast plush toys down beside each other on my bed. For a few moments, I look at them, thoughtful. And eventually, I move to the exit. I move to exit the room and turn my thoughts to brighter things. Okay, I guess that's the end of chapter. Yeah, chapter one already. And chapter two is Karma and Llama. <laughs> that's cute, Karma, because they rhyme. Karma and Llama. <laughs> Anyways, as per usual, as with every, uh, as with the routes that we've done so far in every chapter we are going to end it here because that way we can t keep things nice and neat and together and i don't like the start of this next chapter it seems very eerie but that is for something that we'll leave next time so thank you guys so much for all your patience and understanding once again because you know if any of you guys aren't aware i am i consider myself still on a semi hiatus on my channel because i feel like my sket my recording schedules and all the stuff like happening real life like I, it's still pretty 
unpredictable on my end, so I don't know exactly when I get time to record and upload for you. So I'm just to just so that you guys don't, you know, be too disappointed. Uh, my uploads will be inconsistent, and that's just a fair warning to y'all. So. Um, the best way to know when the next time I do upload though is to subscribe to my channel and to turn on the notification bell at least because even if you do ask, again, I can give you a for sure 100% answer. So yeah, that is the best way. But otherwise, I am available or active on my channel itself. So if you shoot any messages or just leave any comments, then I will for sure see them and I will get back to them as best I can. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and tuning into Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore once again. The start of Karma's Rat. I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing the rest of where the story will go. So until next time, I'll see you on my other Let's Play or, or, or perhaps I'll see you back here another time. But for now, bye!